things happen um, when, when we're looking at the Hebrew calendar, whether it's March or April, the fact of the matter is it's spring. And so it's a time to march forward or to spring forward, to advance, to begin to keep moving. And I've really been feeling in the spiritual realm that last Wednesday when we came and we repented, and I actually had people that came up to me um, afterwards and on Thursday, and they said, Pastor Candace, things feel different for me now because as a corporate body, um, I, I repented with everyone and I'm not carrying that same thing with me. Can I get an amen? Did anybody experience that? See, sometimes you need corporate repentance because you need somebody to help walk you through the process of confession. Confession is not normal for us. It's not something that we like to do. Our pride uh, causes us not to open our mouths, not to talk to God about those things. We, we live in a state of fear. We don't often want to confess what's going on in and, in and around our hearts. And so when we come together corporately and we, we all agree together, things break in the spiritual realm. Well, on Sunday night, so we get this great breakthrough. On Sunday night, I began to feel in the spirit realm that there were hindering spirits that were coming again against the people, just just people in God's church overall. But of course, since Pastor Adam and I care for this congregation, our heart um, is for making sure that this congregation is safe. Of course, you know, we do have international ministry, and I'm concerned about everybody all over the planet all the time, but, but my greatest concern is for you all because you are in our body. And so I began to feel that the enemy was coming against the people in our church, and he was coming against those that were doubting, those that were fearful, those that had believed they wanted to advance, but these forces said, you will not go forward. You're clean, you're ready to go, and they're saying, I'm mad, and you're not going anywhere. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that tonight, but in line with this teaching, I want um, Elder Debbie Sean to come up here because Debbie um, is also a prophet, and she is going to share a dream that God just gave her, which helps uh, this message make a lot more sense uh, when it comes forth. And so when Debbie shared this with me, I said, Deb, you need to share that with the congregation, especially since... Um, I'm carrying a burden. Pastor Adam is carrying a burden for the spirits that are coming against the people. Okay, so um, it was it was last week that I had this dream, and and in the dream I heard I heard the voices. I just need to take a break from church, and in the voice it was. They were so, things were coming against them, and they just felt so overwhelmed that they just felt like, I, I just need to sit down and rest. I just, I just need a moment. And then I heard another voice say, well, I'll go to church, but I just need a break from serving. I, I feel like I just can't serve right now. And God's voice spoke very clear and he said, you have to press through in this season. This is your time. And I, very clearly, I saw this church, this, this church body. So I know that he's talking about all of us. And, and I know I'm not the only one that's, that's a little tired. I know it's, it's more than just me. But I heard God say very clearly, this is your season. This is Freedom Destiny season. This is each one of your season. And you have to stand. You have to march forward. No matter how tired you are. Just like a woman in labor. Now, a woman in labor wants to give up. Wants to say, I, I am tired. I can't do this anymore. But God is bringing forth the destiny in each one of you. Because your destiny is linked to Freedom Destiny. And if you can't move forward in your destiny, then us as a church, as a whole, we can't move forward as one, right? So I will say, God is saying very clearly, do not stop. Stay the course. Keep your eyes on him and stay advancing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so, so in line with the planting of the seed, you were to be declaring and decreeing. And I said at least three times a day, but, you know, and that's just because a lot of times we need to set alarms to make sure that we do what it is that God is calling us to do. Have your phone go off. So you take a couple of moments to begin to speak to the seed that you planted in the ground because that's an element that help me, helps make it grow. And then God began to speak to me about Isaiah chapter 54, and that's what I want to talk about tonight, because Isaiah 54 is about how to advance. It's about kind of what God does when he, he asks us to stretch ourselves out. And so I want to read to you just the first five verses of that. Um, I, I'm going to ask you to read all of Isaiah 54 after tonight. Um, take some time to meditate on it. It's beautiful beautiful um, word um, from Isaiah about um, the future glory of Zion. And so it really is a, um, a, a word that helps us understand God's love and God's heart for his people. But I, I just want to focus on the beginning of it. So uh, Isaiah 54 starts out, Sing, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. And this is really referring to um, the differences between Sarah and Hagar. And so Sarah was called to birth the promise, okay? And so that's what, what um, that first verse is all about. But then the second verse says, enlarge your tent. Okay, so in other words, children of Abraham, enlarge your tent Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. In other words, what was barren, what was desolate is going to come to life because we are making a choice to advance and to stretch. Then in verse 4 says, do not be afraid, you will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the re reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. And why is this important? Because in verse 4, after um, Isaiah begins to speak about stretching your tents, enlarging your territory, he comes in directly after that, and he says, now do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. In other words, you are about ready to spread out, but what the enemy wants to do is to make you fearful and cautious so you won't do that very thing. So he gives an encouragement, go and do this, but do not be afraid. Do not fear disgrace. See, it takes a lot of faith to enlarge your area to spread out your tent, to begin to make new relationships, to begin to step into new territories and do outreach, to begin to move into what God has called you to do. And so he's saying specifically, you will not be humiliated. In other words, if the enemy has tried to feed you a bunch of stuff that tries to tell you not to spread yourself out, the word tells us here, it's a lie. It's a lie. Now, if you agree with that lie, then you make the, that lie a truth and you begin to own it. And if you own it, then you won't stretch your tent out. You'll stay right where you're at. But that's not what God wants you to do in this season. This season, it's March. It's March forward. It's go ahead. It's branch yourself out. He's saying branch yourself out. When he tells us to deposit seed, he's telling us to do that because a new crop is going to come up. Something new is going to come up that is going to advance us that we're going to have to take care of. And so what God began to minister to me is, yes, it is a word for people to begin to spread themselves out. But every time there is an advancement, there is a force that pushes you back. It's just the way it works. A lot of times, I don't even know I'm advancing until I feel a hindrance spirit. Then I'm like, whoa, I must be going somewhere because this thing pushing pretty hard on me. <laughs> right? Sometimes you can really feel yourself moving into something, and then all of a sudden there's a blockade there. And with the hindering spirits, you have to make sure that you don't accept the lie. 
You don't play into the shame. You don't get humiliated. You don't fear. You walk in humility. You do not doubt. You do not walk in discouragement. You see, those forces are looking for a candidate that lives like that. See, God's got a great destiny for you, but those forces don't want it to happen. And listen, they're just doing what they do. That's how they operate. Our job is to overcome them. Our job is to say, no, I know what you're doing, but I can see the other side of how you're pushing me. I can see that my tent pegs are stretched. I can see that you are advancing, that I am advancing in God. And so when you try and show yourself to me, hindering spirit, I'm going to bind you in the name of Jesus because you have no authority here. But you see, if you don't speak up, if you don't say, I'm going to bind those forces, they'll just keep pushing you. Then you'll start to wear the weights. Then you'll start to get heavy. Then you don't want to come to church. You don't want to do this. I'm all discouraged. I'm, I, I'm take me out, you know, I'm going to sleep for three days. I'm depressed. I don't want to see anybody. All the while, you were going forward. And the enemy cut in on you. And so we have to know that right now, that's what the enemy is doing. Well, why is he doing it to the church of Jesus Christ? Not just us, but all over the place. He's doing it because he knows that Passover is coming and the Resurrection Sunday is coming. He's doing it because he knows Nisan, the new calendar, turns over on March 17th. So if he can get us to doubt and feel discouraged right now, we may choose not to do certain things that we had planned to do because of fear. Well, well, what if it doesn't? And, you know, I'm not sure about this. And the Lord is saying, no, you have to keep going. You have to keep marching. You cannot quit because what I have for you is too great. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, the word says, Paul was talking about his different opportunities. And he says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. In other words, he's getting ready to go. He wants to go on another missionary journey. But he says, listen, he says, With this open door comes many adversaries. He's saying, I know God wants to advance, but I also got to be prepared because I'm about ready to walk into a fight. Hebrews chapter 12 Verses 1 and 3, and I want to focus on, on this, entanglements, because you see, entanglements are areas in our life that are going to stop us from advancing. And in Hebrews chapter 12, the word says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. In other words, there's witnesses in heaven that are watching what we're doing. And the word says to throw off everything that hinders. Throw off what is hindering movement. Which means, that word hinder means throw off the weight, throw off the burden, and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out, or marked out for us. Now he says, listen, throw off what hinders and throw off what entangles. In other words, he's saying when you feel the hindrances and the entanglements, in other words, if you make choices that have entangled you in certain things that you don't need to be entangled in, you have to get rid of those if you plan on advancing. Now, only you know what those are. Only you know the sin in your life that is easily entangling you. But you know what? That is a burden and a weight that cannot go with you into the place that God has called you. You, you know, when um, it is, it, the irony of this is that we're talking about this now because, and this is why it's prophetic. Today's March 7th. March 17th, the first day of Nisan, is the first day that God spoke to Moses in Exodus chapter 12. And he said to him, he said, listen, tell the congregation that on the 10th day of this month, he said this to him 
which would have been March 17th. Let's say it was this year in 2018. It would be like God showed up to Moses and said on March 17th, listen, tell the whole congregation in Israel on the 10th day of this month, which means on the 27th of March, you shall take every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. In other words, he's saying on March 27th is the day that the offering needs to come up because the angel of death is getting ready to come in. And then on the 31st, which is Passover, uh, which is the Passover Seder time, is the day that the offering would have been brought forth, okay? And that is the offering of Jesus Christ. Then we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, which is April 1st. And then we begin to go in to the next month. It's a little while later before, go, before we go into the next month. But then you flip to Exodus chapter 13. So 12, he tells them, listen, get yourself ready. 13... Then Moses tells the people, listen, remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by the strength of the hand the Lord brought you out from this place, there shall no leavened bread be eaten. This same day come out of the month of Abib, which is actually the month of Nisan, because Nisan is the Hebrew word, Abib is the Canaanite word. Okay, so basically 12 is get your lamb together, then the lamb is going to be killed, the Blood is going to go on the doorpost. The angel of death is going to come through. Right after that, they're supposed to get themselves ready. They're headed to get out of Egypt. When they're headed to get out of Egypt, this is what Moses says to them in Exodus 14. He says, fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you. All you have to do is hold your peace. Now, God tells them, like he's telling us, it's time to go forward. This happens every year, folk. And if you've been with Pastor Adam and I for the last 10 years at Freedom Destiny Church, you hear almost the same thing this time of year. It's prophetic because it's in the Word of God, and it comes the same time every year. When you follow the calendar, you know what God is doing. So he wants to move you. Now listen, when he moved them, what did he tell them to take? When they were going to split, after the angel of death came, he said, listen, eat this meal in haste and go. What you're supposed to take with you is the kneading troughs, the bread without leaven, the unleavened bread. In other words, don't take the bread that has any leaven in it, any sin in it, because it can't go with you. It's too heavy. You take the troughs, you take the unleavened bread. Yeah, take your cattle, plunder the Egyptians, take what's for your future and get out of town. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? He didn't say take what's from your past and go. He said, it's time to go now. Take what I give you for your future. The gold and all of the plunder of Egypt was for their future, not for their past. It was to set them up in the new place that God had called them. So when God says to us, move ahead and don't pay attention to those hindering spirits, you bind them and keep moving. He says, you don't get discouraged. You don't get depressed. You don't start whining. You don't start complaining. You don't start doubting. You don't start talking to people about how hard it is. You start praying, believing, interceding, sowing seeds, stepping forward, keeping your eyes on the perfecter of your faith, and he will bring you to the end of the task that God has called you to be at. What happens is we take our eyes off of Jesus. And when we get our eyes off of him, all we see is what we don't have to take with us on the journey. We know this because when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water in Matthew chapter 14, what happened to him? Everybody knows the story. I could ask any one of you to take this mic and you'd finish it off. He's going to finish it off probably. You going to finish off Peter? No? Okay. Should I keep going or you... When I heard her talking about uh, what you all were just receiving and hearing about how the people were getting ready, if you remember, right after that, then they rebelled again. They built a golden calf. They couldn't go into the promised land, right? Had to wait for that generation to basically get wiped out because they were unbelievers. Same situation when you jump into Joshua. This goes along with what Pastor Candace is saying, marching forward. 
this time Joshua, who was Moses' right-hand man during this whole time that we just were being described to in Exodus, 40 years later, Moses does not get to go in to the promised land. Joseph, jo I mean, Joshua's handed the reins. They come across, and what one of the things that is very significant that you have to understand about pastors, shepherds, in this case, Joshua, he told the people to shut up. Well, this was the story. All their doubting, all their complaining, year after year, where, how are you going to feed me, miracle after miracle, still complaining. Watch this for 40 years. They come across the Jordan, Jericho. You're going to march around it and you're not going to say a word. You don't say a word until I tell you. And then when I tell you to say a word, I want you to say that word at the top of your lungs and those walls in your life are going to come down. Don't get mad at your pastor if he's telling you you just don't know what's going on. Many times you just need to keep your mouth quiet. You need to, you need to zip it, lock it, and throw away the key. You get what I'm saying? Because, and, and it's, it's a lot more difficult than it was, in my opinion, in Joshua's time, because you got social media. You don't have to be right next to this person complaining. You can be texting your friend over there, emailing your sister over here, calling. You know what they're telling me to do? So I'm, I'm serious. This ties into this marching forward. Amen. 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 Okay, so we know in Matthew 14 that Jesus was walking on the water and Peter saw him walking. Peter got all excited, and he said, you know, I want to walk to you. And Jesus said, okay, well, come on. So Peter got out of the, the boat. He walked on the water, and he came toward Jesus. That's what verse 29 says. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and he began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. But Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And what did he say to him? You of little faith, why did you doubt? Hindering spirits love the doubter. They can smell you. You give off a scent. You smell in the spiritual realm. Your doubt sends up an aroma. And they're floating around going, ooh, there's one. <laughs> Let's see if I can't take them out right now. And then they start whispering in your ear, psst, that doubt thing. Yeah, keep doubting them. Just keep going. You can't really. Feeding more. Come on, y'all laughing because you know you heard a voice. Come on. That, that's not for you. You aren't meant for that. You don't got the gifts to do that thing. That's too much money. Don't get yourself involved in that. You, you can't do that. And then you start saying, you start saying, yep, you're right. I can't do it. I don't got enough money. I don't got enough of this. I don't got enough of it. You're right. I think I'm just going to back off this train right now. And they're going, hallelujah, I've hindered again. Do not be a statistic, please. Fight for yourself. Listen, me and Pastor Adam, Pastor Dina, Debbie, the elders, we can pull you out of the pit. But we don't want to pull you out of the pit. We want you to pull yourself out of the pit. Because if you can pull yourself out of the pit, we taught you what you need to know for you and for your family. I know that if you get near me, I could pull you out of the ditch. Because I don't live in a ditch. But you don't need me. You got God. Let him talk to you. Say what you need to say in the spiritual realm and get yourself out of this ditch. And then take your whole family with you as you come out of that place. And so hindering spirits want to eat you for breakfast. That's their job. But you've got to give them somebody else to chew on. It's not going to be you. So you got to make 
make a choice. And if the band wants to come up, you can come up now. You got to make a choice to say no. And so God spoke to me and said, listen, I want the people to enlarge them tents, to get out and do what I've called them to do, each and every one of them individually. The hindering spirits are there, but they're starting to believe the lies that they're hearing and they're doubting and they're getting discouraged and they're getting fearful. And so they're inviting forces that don't need to be invited because they're in agreement with those forces. Now listen, folk, you want to be a victorious church, then you need to learn how to live a victorious life at home when no one is watching you. People who can be victorious when nobody's watching them are leaders. They can lead others to victory. But if you can't be victorious at home by yourself, then you ain't got no business leading anybody outside of that. See, I want people, Pastor Adam wants people that can be victorious all the time when things are not looking right. But that's a training process. You got to train yourself to be victorious. You got to train yourself to always look above and not at the earth and the second realm. The second realm wants to eat you for breakfast. Don't have breakfast with them. Don't pull up a chair. Don't talk to them. Don't have anything to do with them. I told this story once a long time ago. Have you ever watched that movie, A Beautiful Mind? about the mathematician who had schizophrenia. They did a great job on that movie because they actually showed what it's like when you see forces of evil. And this man was consumed by forces that would speak to him. And when he would pay attention to them and he would connect with them, he would get more and more confused, more and more paranoia, more and more schizophrenia to the point it destroyed his life. Now, after all the years of watching these forces and going through therapy, he began to develop a training skill that although the demonic forces were there and were talking to him, and he saw them, he chose not to speak to them. He left them there. He chose not to engage with them. He didn't have a party and invite them to come sit with him. He just looked at him and looked away. And every time he did that, he got stronger and stronger in who he was. And he eventually began to have the opportunity to teach again at the college that he had to leave because of his paranoid schizophrenia. It's a great story. If you get a chance to watch it, it's called The Beautiful Mind. But what I thought was so amazing about it is Hollywood really portrayed what happens in the spiritual realm when we can't actually see these figures, but we sense that they're there. And what was so amazing is he did what God wants us to do. Though they're there, you do not have to engage with them. Though they want you and plan, and they always do the same thing, folk. You don't gotta be too smart with this. If you're living in doubt, fear, shame, discouragement, sin, entanglement, suicide, they are right there with you. They're your pals. They're your pets. But if you choose the right path and decide to ignore them, though they'll stay and taunt, they will not pull you away. They will not move you off your mountain. They will not get you off your seat with Jesus. You see, Jesus sees those forces, but they're a footstool under his feet. And legitimately, they really are, because he's in the third realm, and these guys are in the second realm. They're not invited to heavenly realms. They're not there. They're in the second realms, and they're in the earthly realm. So technically, they are a footstool to Jesus' feet. If you're on Jesus' lap, then they're a footstool to yours. They're under your feet, too. So really, tonight was a teaching. I want us all to pray together, and then if you have a need to come up to the altar, if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you want to want to receive Jesus, you want to receive forgiveness of sins, or you want to um, recommit your life, or have someone pray for you for healing or baptism of the Holy Spirit, we're going to have that. But let's pray together as a church. May everyone stand up. See, Pastor Adam and I, and most of all Jesus, want to see you victorious. And he made a way for all of that to happen. So let's pray together that God gives you discernment right now. Father, I praise you and I thank you, Lord, in this house, the discernment is going to fall on the people of God. I thank you, Father, right now, even the people that are listening through the online. 
or those that watch after this will find an impartation of discerning of spirits. They will begin to discern hindering spirits, but will not play with them, will turn from them, and will say, you are bound in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord, I ask you for an empowerment. I ask you, Lord, to trigger sight so that one can see what's going on in the spiritual realm and begin to stand firm. I thank you, Lord, that all over the sanctuary and online, Father, that you're going to bring a new level of sight with these hindering spirits. The people who begin to feel their presence and know that they're there and know what they need to do, they need to bind those spirits. And then they're going to loose the angelic forces, the heavenly forces to come with them to advance into the lamb that God has called them. Advancing into enlarging tents. Because once we bind, we also loose. And so we're going to loose the angelic forces of freedom, of peace, of love, of joy, of patience, of goodness. Those forces that want to enter into areas and do the work and will of God. The angelic forces of victory, the angelic forces of movement, the angelic forces forces that are swift and quick and sudden, the angelic forces that bring power, that bring a sword, that bring the word. Those are the ones, Lord, that we release into this place and over our lives. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to begin to stir in the spirits of each and every person an ability to stand up and raise up on the inside like a warrior to say, no, halt, stop, I bind you. I'm moving ahead with angelic forces. I will not look behind. I only look ahead and I'm only taking with me the things for my future. I'm leaving the entanglements of sin. I'm leaving the hindrances because God has opportunity for me. So Father, I praise you and I thank you in this place for impartation to fall on each and every one of us and a stirring to begin to happen in our spirits. I thank you that for the next 10 days, we will sow with our mouths and the right elements that you have given us, the word of God, we will sow into the ground that we will see the sprouts of our future come forth on March 17th. I declare it and decree it in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that you will teach your people how to stand, how to fight, and how to move into the plans and purposes of God. And we thank you and we all.